Hello and welcome. My name is Ben, and I am your instructor here. Lesson three of our reading course. I'm glad you could join us. Let's get started. All right, as usual, I want to review just the basic reading tips. Um, I always start with this because these are really the most important pieces of the puzzle. First of all, pay attention to the heidel, the, the heidel, <laughs> pay attention to the title and the headings. Remember, as an IELTS writer, my goal is always to balance the difficulty level, right? If reading seems pretty hard, I'm going to write a very detailed title or I will add headings to help the reader understand. Okay? So that's, that's one of my jobs that I do is I write the IELTS exam. If, if this is your first time hearing me, um, I am an IELTS exam writer and that's something that my editor often suggests to me, right? Sometimes I'll submit a passage and he'll say, Oh, this seems a little bit difficult. Um, can we make it a little bit easier somehow? I often add a detailed title or a subtitle or an introduction or a heading. Uh, or a couple of headings, just to make it easier, okay? So, if they're there, they're there to help you, so read them, okay? Second, check the question types before you read. Right? Your approach to each passage depends on which question types you need to answer, so read them first. Third, don't panic about the topic. As I've discussed before, the difficult topics, the topics that you don't know anything about, are actually easier to answer because it's a pure comprehension type of passage. Okay? If you already know about the topic, your ideas about the answers are going to be uh, altered or swayed based on your knowledge. So it's actually good to go into it with no idea of the topic. And fourth, of course, answer every question. If you are running out of time, put down an answer. You might get one right randomly, okay? Don't leave anything blank. All right, now I also want to review the intensive reading strategy um, that we studied in previous lessons, okay? The strategy is called find and match, okay? Find and match. You read a question, then you look at the passage, to find where it is, then you match it up and find the answer. Okay? So it's, it's kind of a question first idea. Look at the question. You're going to find some keywords, okay? Some synonyms. Scan the passage and find the area of the passage that matches the question and then match up the passage piece to the question. If it's a match, it's a correct answer. If it's not a match, it's not the correct answer. Okay. That goes for true, false, not given. Okay. It also goes for multiple choice. That's what we studied in lesson one and lesson two. And it's also going to work today in our lesson on matching. Okay. Remember, it covers all of these types of questions. An intensive reading strategy is what you want. Okay. And yes, the most basic intensive reading strategy is find and match. If you know that strategy, you can answer 80% of the questions on the IELTS reading. But today, we are actually going to look at two strategies as we talk about matching information and matching features. Now, there's one more matching type, okay, and that is matching headings. But we are not going to do that today. Okay, matching headings is a totally different strategy, totally different skill. We're going to talk about that tomorrow or in the next lesson. But in this lesson, we are not going to do matching headings, only matching information and matching features. Okay, and if you're not sure what that means, give me a second. We'll look at examples, a lot of examples soon. But let's take a look at the two strategies that I would like to teach you today. First, the find and match. We are familiar with this strategy already, okay? So start with the question set, 
underline the keywords in question one, the first question, and note any synonyms. Right? Your goal there right, is to set up the next part where you're going to scan the passage for each question, one by one. Okay, scanning through that passage, um, trying to find those keywords that match up with question one. Okay, once you find those keywords or those synonyms, right, then you're going to match up the piece of the passage with the question set to find the matching answer choice. Okay, we studied this in lesson one, we studied this in lesson two. This is our find and match strategy. But today, for this question type in particular, for matching, we're going to look at one more question type, or one more strategy, excuse me, one more strategy. What is that? The slow scan. The slow scan. All right? It starts in a similar way. We start with the question set. Okay? The slow scan, just like find and match, it is an intensive skill. So we start with the questions. Underline all the keywords in the question set. Okay, you see the difference there? You see the difference there? Okay. In find and match, we looked at questions one by one. Look at question one, find in the passage, match and answer. Then move on to question two. In the slow scan, you're looking at the whole question set. Okay, notice all of the keywords, note down synonyms. You might have to spend three or four minutes just underlining and noting. Okay. Then go to the passage. Okay. This first step, limit the passage area if possible. Okay. This step right here, really, really important. Okay. You're looking for where does the set begin? Where does the set end? Set your limits there. Limit the passage area, if possible. Okay, Then, you're going to scan the entire passage area slowly in order. And as you're scanning, you're looking for any of the keywords in the set. Okay, So you start scanning, oh, found a keyword, then match it up, find the right answer choice, answer it. Then continue your scan. Okay, might not sound like a big difference, but it is. The strategy is very different because it, we're talking about efficiency here. Okay, so with find and match, the efficiency problem is that we might end up scanning the same section several times. Because the first time we scan it, we're only looking for question one. The second time we scan it, we're only looking for question two. Okay. That can be a waste of time. Right? In the slow scan, you're only scanning one time. You're scanning more slowly, but you're not ha going to have to scan twice or three times or four times. Okay. The problem is you have to keep all of those keywords in your mind at the same time as well. And that's the difficulty. So each strategy has its strength and a weakness. Okay. But we're going to look very clearly at when to use find and match and when to use the slow scan. Both are effective, but both are effective for different, uh, different sets. And we're going to look at why that is in just a moment. So let's go ahead and start looking at our, um, our examples for this. All right, so let's take a look at this example first. Okay, this is from a Cambridge book. This is book number eight. Um, and uh, we're going to look at this one first. Later on, we'll look at some uh, insider materials. But for now, let's start with Cambridge, and let's look at this first set. Okay, so our first set, we are going to try the, um, the simplest approach, the intensive approach that we have studied already, find and match. Okay? And we're matching up the information here with the paragraphs here. Okay? Um, let's see a lot of how many paragraphs here. We've got 
B, C, D, E, F, G, H, eight paragraphs that we're looking at. Now, first things first, look at the, look at the title, A Chronicle of Timekeeping, and notice this, a subtitle. Now, I already mentioned this before, but why does this passage include a subtitle? Because it is somewhat difficult, okay? So they give us a little bit of extra help. Our conception of time depends on how we measure it. Okay, so now we know what this article is really about, okay? It is something about the way that we measure time, okay? Um, different ways of measuring time and how we think about time. And notice we've got some dates here, okay? We've got the Roman Empire, the Egyptians, centuries before. So some kind of history of keeping time, it looks like. Okay, we can get all of that from this and a very quick scan, noticing, you know, some years, things like that. Okay, 14th century here. So a history of timekeeping, I guess. All right, now, find and match. Here's our strategy, right? Start with number one. And we want to look for keywords. Okay, early timekeeping invention. Cold temperatures. Okay, we might want to think of a couple of synonyms here. Early, um, would be early, um, something like many centuries ago. Okay, um, timekeeping clock, a calendar. Um, invention, discovery, okay, something like that. And cold temperatures, cold, freezing, snow, ice, things like that. All right, those are the things we're looking out for, okay? And our goal here is to scan and try to find one of these. Now, just based on what we know about this article, we know that it is about history. And here we see early. So that tells me that we're probably going to be looking at the first half of the article, maybe even the first three paragraphs. Okay, so we're going to search here for an invention, but especially cold. Okay, so scan through paragraph A first. Scanning through... Hmm, I see light and darkness. I see solar. I don't see anything about cold. Okay, so moving on. Paragraph B. Looking for cold. I don't see anything about cold, so moving on to C. Looking for cold. Hmm, still nothing. So I was wrong. We didn't see it in the first three. Moving on to D. I think I noticed it already. Bing, bing, bing. Freezing. Okay. Although these devices, so let's, we saw freezing, so let's, uh, let's highlight that. Here's where we're looking for. Okay, now make sure Remember, our last step is find and match. Here we found it. Now we match it. So an early timekeeping invention affected by cold, cold temperatures. Although these devices, devices, device invention, okay, they could not always be depended on in the cloudy and often freezing weather of Northern Europe. Now, does this sentence match this? Okay. Is this a description of something that is affected by cold temperatures? And I believe that this is a very long paraphrase that matches that completely. Okay. So our answer to number one is D.
All right, moving on to number two. Keywords, uh, importance, geography, uh, calendar, and farming communities. You know, importance, necessity, um, important, necessary, vital, something like that. Geography. Uh, geography, now maybe not a synonym of the word geography, but some words related, okay? North, south, east, west, etc. Um, what else for geography? cities, countries, regions, okay? Write these things down because these help you brainstorm, okay? We talked about that in lesson one and lesson two, but write them down. Uh, discovery of the calendar, calendar, I don't think, well, maybe we'll have words like uh, months, days, maybe, okay? In farming communities, farming, agriculture, livestock, um, planting, growing, crops. Okay? All of those words, the more that you practice the IELTS reading, the more of these types of words you will notice. Okay, and the better you will get at this skill. All right, so now we have a bunch of keywords we're looking for. Okay, geography, farming communities. I think this one might be the easiest one to notice. Um, and also geography. Okay, so we're searching for geography things and farming things. Now again, we're starting back at the beginning. So remember, this is the disadvantage of the find and match. We're scanning again, the same area we're scanning again. Okay, but we do see calendar. And calendar to me comes before timekeeping. Calendar is just day keeping. Um, so we should be able to find it in before paragraph D, I guess. So let's start with A. We look for farming communities. Ooh. Ah, here we go. Planting, harvesting. You see calendar? I see calendar here. Okay, so... Let's highlight this part. We did the find, now the match. The importance of geography in the development of the calendar. Let's see if we can find anything for geography in here. See anything about geography? I do not see anything about geography. And I don't see anything about the importance I only see a couple of words related to farming, and I see a word calendar. So this is a false match, okay? That's why we got to make sure to match, find and match. So this one is not right, because our matching did not work. So move on to B. Anything about farming in here? I see equator. Okay, that's about geography. Oh, I see northern. Ooh, okay, okay. Looks like... Let's look at this part right here. Now we did our find. Now match. Okay, importance of geography. Lower latitudes. Northern climates. We've got geography. We see the word crucial. Okay. That means important. Okay, lower latitudes is also a geography word. We see calendars. And uh, seasonal architecture. The solar year became more crucial. Calendars that were developed at lower latitudes, northern climes, where seasonal agriculture was practiced. This looks like a perfect match to me. So our answer here is going to be B. Okay, moving on to number three. The origins of the pendulum clock. All right, this is a great one for find and match because we have a really obvious, um, really obvious keyword here. There is no way to paraphrase pendulum clock. It is a type of clock. So we're searching for this exact keyword, 
pendulum clock. So we also know that it's a clock, and here looks like all about uh, calendars. So we're going to be looking in the bottom half here. Pendulum clock. All right. This looks like a sundial. Okay. Let's look starting with E. Anybody see pendulum? Pendulum, pendulum. Pendulum. I don't see it. F. Anything about a pendulum? Here we go. Pendulum clock. By the 16th century, a pendulum clock had been devised. The origins of the pendulum clock. Boom. No need to look any further. We got it. Moving on to four. The word simultaneous. We have different societies. Uniform hours. Okay. Simultaneous, we need to know what that means at the same time. Um, different societies. Okay. I don't think we can think of a keyword to, uh, a synonym to match this, um, but we're going to look for this when we do our matching. Probably not in the finding part. Uniform hours. Uniform hours. We need to know what that means. Uniform. Same. Consistent. Unchanging. Okay, one hour lasts 60 minutes. Every hour lasts 60 minutes. That is what uniform hour means. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Different societies, uniform hours. Okay, this is going to take a little bit of work, but we need to f try to guess where to search. But let's look back in B, okay? Um, and we need to find, mm, I think different societies is our, our best way to search. So here we've got Roman Empire. We have only one society here, so skip. Roman Empire, we got Egyptians here. And no other one. Oh, here we got Greeks and Romans. Hmm. So let's take a look at this. This might be a match. As we see Greeks and Romans here, two societies. But I see first adopted by the Greeks and then by the Romans. So to me, eh, simultaneous? I don't know. I don't think so. And then let's check uniform hours. Summer hours were long, winter ones short. Only in the spring and autumn were the hours of daylight and darkness equal. Okay. Yep. That is not a match. Okay. Couple of keywords, but the meaning is not the same. Okay, moving on to D. Multiple societies, different societies, no. E, different societies. Ooh, Italians, Babylonians, Germany, okay. We got a match, or we got, we found it. Now let's see if it matches. The schemes that divided the day into 24 equal parts. Ooh, interesting. 24 equal parts. To me, that is a perfect match for uniform hours. Okay, it looks like these are going on at the same time. We don't see the word simultaneous, but yeah, I think, you know, we look through F, maybe G. I don't really see multiple societies again, so... I think E is definitely going to be the right answer for this. All right. And there you have it. So that is questions one through four solved using our find and match approach. All right. Well, let's move on to our second set here, looking at questions five through eight. I want you to notice some differences between the first set and the second set. Okay. The first set we were matching information. Okay. Um, so it was, we needed to cover kind of the whole passage here, right? Because the paragraphs were very mixed up. For this type, I think find and match is our best strategy. 
But questions five through eight are different. Here we're matching features. Notice that we're looking at a list of events and matching them to a list of nationalities, which are here. Because we have this extra information and because we're only answering four questions, we can use our slow scan method to be more efficient. Okay, so the beginning of the slow scan method, we want to start the same way by highlighting keywords okay, and uh, thinking of synonyms. Okay, so here we're, we're not really looking for, oh yeah, we're looking for things to match. So civil calendar, I'm thinking public, um, equal in length. Okay, we've got same equal equal in length same long um, it's hard to think of synonyms for that but we'll keep an eye on this equal in length idea um, they divided the day into two equal halves notice day here not not hour but day um, Two equal halves. Um, split would be similar to divide. Split, um, same length, 50%. Um, okay, we're looking at anything to do with half, equal, uh, and divide. Okay, here we've got a new cabinet shape. And we have timekeeper. It's a timekeeper we know is a, like a clock or some sort of device. New cabinet shape, shape like style, model, um, shape, style, model, design, something like that. Okay, and cabinet is a kind of, I guess, case or a type of furniture, yeah, something like this. All right, and then finally, created a calendar, okay, to organize public events. Okay, let's do organize public events. So there we'd have something like um, schedule, um, public, civil, um, citizens, events, um, the synonym for event. Um, oh, I can't think of a synonym for event. Huh. Schedule, civil, citizens, public, gathering. Okay, gatherings maybe. And then we've got work schedules. Um, so work, something like labor, uh, employment, um, schedule, calendar again. Okay, anything related to this is what we're looking for. Now the second step is going to be to go to the passage here, but the important thing is we don't need to read all of the passage. We only need to cover the areas that mention these nationalities. Okay, so here we've got Babylonians. Okay, so Babylonians, we're gonna highlight that. Looking on to Egyptians. Okay, Egyptians looks like this area right here. Okay, then we've got Greeks here, right? So we'll highlight this area as well. Okay, next we're looking for English. England, English, England, English. Here we have England. England, England. This area. 
Germans and French. I notice Germany here and France here. Okay, I also noticed Babylonians here as well. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Here's our Germans and our French. Any other mention of... Oh, we also have England here. All right. So we have a limited passage now. Okay. A, C, part of E, F, and G. So this is more suitable for the slow scan method. Now, with a slow scan, the key is we're not looking for number five. We're looking for any of these keywords. So I want you to read through these again just to get them in your mind. Okay, civil calendar, equal in length, divide the day, equal halves, cabinet shape, um, public events, work schedules. Okay, any of these that kind of jump into your mind, okay, I want you to try to notice. All right. So slowly scan through A and see if you notice anything that that matches our keywords. I notice here communal activities. Okay, I notice coordinate. Hmm. Organize public events. Coordinate communal activities. Plan the shipment of goods, work schedules, right? Regulate planting and harvesting, also work schedules. All right. To me, this is a pretty clear match to Babylonians. So we can see that number eight is going to be A. Now, the nice thing is that we can now cross this one off our list. All right. So that's a bunch of keywords that we don't need to think about anymore. Now we're only looking for equal in length, civil calendar, you know, two equal halves, cabinet shape. And we don't need to look at A again. Okay, we can keep scanning through. Okay, we don't see any of those keywords here. So we continue our, low, our slow scan here. No, mm, oh, I see municipal calendar. That's the same as civic calendar. Twelve months of thirty days, with five days added to approximate the solar year. Twelve months of thirty days. Does that match? We're looking for months are equal in length. Well. That looks pretty equal. We've got those five days that are added, which might might be there to trick us. We need to be careful. But for now, unless we find something better, I think this is a good match for Egyptians. Okay? Unless we find something better, I think that's a good match. Mm. All right, and now, remember, we're only looking for... Two equal halves, cabinet shape. Okay, so keep keep looking through. Remember, Egyptians can be used twice, so we need to be careful. Mm, I don't really see it. No, I don't see it in there. So let's keep looking through E. Oh, here we go. I noticed, here we go, split. A little bit of work paying off here. Split the day into two 12-hour periods commencing at midnight. French hours split the day into two 12-hour periods. Bingo, French. French is F. Oh, nice. Okay. And then we can cross this one off and move on to number seven. Okay. Cabinet shape and timekeeper. That's what we're looking for. 
Look through F. I see timekeeper. We need a new shape. New shape. Mm, I don't see a new shape. Ooh, here we go. Original in escapement. What is an escapement? Escapement. I don't know if that's the shape or not. Let's keep reading. Oh, here we go. New floor standing case design, which became known as the grandfather clock. Now, if you really trust your slow scanning, you can see that from here to here, it's all England. So as soon as we get to this point, we know that the only answer can be England. If you really trust your slow scanning, you can answer England immediately when you reach this point. However, I would recommend if you have time, try to find it just to be sure. Okay, so here was our keyword, floor standing case design. Okay, so we know that the answer to this must be B. All right, and that concludes this set. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is some insider materials that I developed myself, uh, and we'll decide for ourselves whether to use um, the find and match strategy or the slow scan strategy. All right, so here we are at our other set here, our other passage. Notice the title, Sleepless in Space. And again, we have a subtitle to help us with the understanding. Research uncovers the long-term effects of disrupted sleep on astronauts. Okay, so we know we're going to have a lot of research which we can also see by the question type here. Okay, we're matching to researchers. All right. Um, and the topic here is disrupted sleep in space, okay, or on astronauts. All right, we can do a quick skim, kind of just to get the, the major ideas here. Okay, looks like we have essentially an introduction. All right. Then we've got okay, something about a 24-hour light cycle. And then we got however here. So these two paragraphs are connected. Astronauts spending long period of space, these conditions are disrupted. So this is our normal 24-hour cycle. This is the disrupted cycle in space. All right. Looks like in addition to the problems caused by weightlessness, so here is problems caused by weightlessness. Then we've got conditions inside the shuttle. Okay, patterns of light and darkness. Right, then hmm, the functioning of the circadian biological clock. Ooh, okay, something scientific here about how this works. Okay, something about brain science. All right, we've got a solution based on this study. Okay, okay, looks like we're trying to understand what these passages mean or what these studies mean. And then finally, one final study at the end. Okay, so we don't really have a conclusion, it looks like. All right, so we have a general idea of how the, the passage is organized. Let's start to take a look here. Um, now, we've got these researchers. So to me, it'll be easy here to, um, to limit the size of the passage, right? Or limit the area of the passage that we're searching for, okay? So I think it would be easier here to do the slow scan. All right, so let's take a look at Laura Hooper. Okay, very easy to find the area of the passage. We just need to match 
find these these uh, people's names. Okay, so this is Laura Hooper. Okay, let's skip paragraph C, skip paragraph D, skip paragraph E. Okay, here is Johanna Meyer. This part. Okay, there's Joanna Meyer and Ulrich Limper. Ulrich Limper. Oh, more about Laura Hooper. Okay, all this is Laura Hooper. So I would imagine two of these would be Laura Hooper and then maybe one Johanna Meyer, one Ulrich Limper, possibly. Okay, oh, and here's Ulrich Limper. This is Ulrich Limper stuff. All right. Um, actually, we we skipped we skipped uh, step one, but let's go do that now. So step one, remember, is to um, find keywords. Okay. So scientific community. Uh, here's a big one: underestimated. Now, whether we can find a synonym or not, this is the meaning that we need to find. Okay, so underestimated, kind of a misunderstanding. Okay, uh, scientific community, we got researchers, scientists. Okay, human health. Okay, we've got uh, health, a healthy. Um, Disease, um, that's pretty good. A medicine, maybe, and impact. We've got light as well, but uh, impact, effect, something along those lines. Okay, twenty-four. Conserve money. Save. And then something like funds or expense. And we want to do this very quickly. Um, facility. That means building. And mimics uh, something like copies or imitates. Hmm. Okay. There's irregular cycles of light. Uh, here is going to be key. Irreg uh, common but serious diseases. Okay, common, usual, um, widespread, but serious, uh, deadly, um, let's see, serious, deadly, Hmm, maybe you guys can think of other ones here, but I'll leave that for now. And daily pattern. Daily 24 hour um, pattern would be kind of a, a schedule, I guess. Of light and darkness. Okay. Every organism, okay, anytime I see every organism, I can think of, you know, as a test writer, I know that this is a common kind of trick to use, um, often in true, false, not given, but um, test writers like to use this idea of every organism, um, all, um, yeah, not only, but also that kind of idea, okay? including humans. Okay. All right. So now the slow scan method, we're starting with the first section here, scanning it slowly, looking for any of these ideas. Okay. At first, there's a lot to keep in our minds. Okay. We've got especially, look at a couple major ones, diseases, every organism, um, 
conserve money, and let's look for human health. Okay, so let's look for these four ones um, in our first scan. I think those should be the ones that will help us find um, the right area. Okay, so scan through here, paragraph B. Uh, right away, I noticed something. All life forms on Earth. Every organism. Well, human beings. Okay, we got a pretty good sign here. It could be a trick, so let's read it and make sure it matches. All life forms on Earth undergo changes on a 24-hour daily cycle. Cycle pattern. In accordance with the changes in natural light, human beings are no exception. Now, to me, this is a very clear... Very clear answer A. And remember, now we don't have to think about this these keywords anymore. Now we're just looking for these three. Okay. Now do you see, make sure we're looking here. See if we see human health, conserve money, diseases. Nope. Okay. Now look down in F. I see health. Okay, so immediately I'm thinking maybe looking for this idea of underestimated. Hmm. Hmm. Take a look at this part here. Now, the idea of underestimated, we're not going to find a synonym there, but look at this idea. We used to think of blah, blah, blah. We now realize this is not the case. Okay, so we used to think of it as harmless or neutral. We now realize that's wrong. Okay, so this is a kind of long form paraphrasing of this idea. Okay, we misunderstood, we underestimated it. We used to think it wasn't important. Now we realize it's important. Okay? So, this is a match. All right. Oops, not F. Who is the researcher here? Ah, Johanna Meyer. And we can cross this off our list. Now, conserve money and diseases. Look through here. Again, we're back to Laura Hooper. Looking for conserve money and diseases. Oh, here we go. Inflammatory bowel, uh, inflammatory diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease. Aha. Uh -huh. 600,000 Americans per year. Looks good. Looks good for number 25. So we're going to go for it here. A. And we can get rid of this one. So now all we're looking for is conserve money. Now, if you're feeling confident, go ahead and mark C here. Okay, because we know there's only one more paragraph and we know it's about Ulrich. If you have time, make sure that you check for conserve money here. Conserve money. Here we go. Without the extreme expense of sending astronauts into space. Okay, we see extreme expense. Or without the extreme expense. And uh, replicate. That's going to be similar to mimic. The conditions of space. Experience of being in space. All right. So it looks like we found everything, and uh, that concludes this lesson, really. All right, so the main thing to take from this is that there are two methods. Okay, remember, the first one we did, we used a simple, um, a simple find and match, okay? Because there was really no way to limit the passage, okay? No way to limit the passage here. Uh, we had no extra information. 
Right. So we found number one, and we matched number one. And then we moved on to number two, and did number two. Okay? We found that the slow scan was a more effective, more efficient method for this part, and, in fact, for this part as well. Okay, we only had to scan once. All right, so choose those two methods wisely, practice using both of them, um, and make sure you know exactly how to choose which one is, is best. If you have any questions on that, uh, make sure to ask me in the QQ group um, only for those who uh, paid for the recording course. All right, well, thank you guys very much, and I will see you in our next lesson. Bye-bye.